Don't you dare touch him, you pedo, or I'll snap him. <laughs> What did you get then? Some chocolate and a pack of biscuits. I got a couple of bottles of water and a Kit Kat. What about you? Got jalapenos, some chocolate, two bags, deodorant, and a box of tampons. What? I panicked. I grabbed anything. You've definitely got something wrong with you. Come on, let's go. Says everyone. Who says what? Mr. Hunter is definitely a human. You say that about everyone. You ain't got a clue. I have actually heard that about Mr. Hunter, though. I hate kiddie fiddles. Who else will want to be a teacher? The wages are crap. They have to get something out of it. Same for off the staff of the mound, too. I bet you'd kill them all, wouldn't you, Dan? You're going straight to the army when you leave school. As soon as I can. On my 16th birthday. Just like your dad. Just like your dad. So what? A drunk or a woman beater? I could never join the army. How rubbish at fighting. <laughs> so what's your favourite war film? Either Jarred or Three Kings. Did you not kill anyone? Yeah, a few raggeds. You really looked up to him, Dan, didn't you? He was an hero, Wes. What can I say? What the bloody hell? What's this? Someone's living here. Must be a tramp. Or a serial killer. Hello! Nah, nobody here. comes back. Don't be a pussy. Well, what if it is a serial killer? Rained all day today. 
Need to get some tape to fix the holes in my tent. Wasted the morning hunting that buck rabbit. Are you still on my training, but I think he's on to me. Spent some time thinking about the past. Regret is not a welcome visitor, but at least he's a familiar companion. Have you seen this? There's drawings and maps and photos in it and everything. Oi! Put that down! Oh my god, Grandad, you well scared me. Is that your granddad? Shut up, where's you moron? What are you doing here? Who says you could touch my stuff? Why? Is it private property? Didn't see a sign. Now don't get smart. Can't help it if I'm clever. Are you a serial killer? If I said I was, would you lot clear off and leave me alone? No, we'd call the police. I'm not a serial killer. Yeah, but that's exactly what a serial killer would say. Shouldn't you lot be at school? Shouldn't you have a bath? Is that a dead rabbit? So what's your story? I like camping, all right? What's it got to do with you? I'm still deciding whether to drop you or not. You could try. Wouldn't do you any good, though. How's that? Well, because you'd end up with a broken nose and you'd spoil my dinner. Are they tea bags in there? I'll tell you what. You lot relax. I'll put the kettle on. You're going to light that fire by rubbing sticks together? Yeah, whatever. So, why do your parents be upset when they find out you bunked off? We're from the mound. It's a children's home. We haven't got any parents. Dan's dad was a soldier. He was killed in action. His mum's an alcoholic after that. She went a bit mental. I never knew my dad. He left before I was born. Mum killed herself when I was seven. What about yours? Oh, they're still alive. They just didn't want me. I was too much of a handful. I beat my next-door neighbour up when I was nine, and I ran over my stepdad his own car when I was 11. Oh, really? That's careless. It wasn't an accident. Oh? He's a pedo. If you don't want broken legs, you shouldn't interfere with little girls. He's lucky I didn't cut his balls off. <laughs> no wonder you're so angry. I'm not angry. I just don't take crap, and I don't like nonsense. I'll tell you what. Forget the tea. Who wants a beer? Here you go. Have you got a dog? No. Hmm. It must be cool, you know, living so close to nature. Not particularly, no. It's no picnic. There's a lot to be said for living a life that's more experiential, getting away from materialism. But it's hard. You go hungry a lot. You have to make compromises. In the winter, it's cold. And when it rains, you get wet. Not many wild animals have a, have a happy ending, you know. Most of them die or... Happy endings are rare in nature. Just getting an ending would be a result. My story finished without a proper ending years ago. The lightning passed me by. When you lot go back to your lives and your warm beds, I'll still be here. You won't know what happens to me, and I won't care what happens to you. My story will just fizzle out. Chances are I'll wake up dead one winter. No one will find me for months. I'll be half rotted into the dirt before some dog walker stumbles across my bones. No one will miss me, that's for sure. Not having to spend my life doing a job I hate to buy crap I don't need is liberating. I'll grant you that. But it's no fairy tale. And I can honestly say. I've never had a moment of wonderness with a rabbit. Did you catch it and kill it yourself? Of course he did. What do you think? It committed suicide. So how do you end up being a tramp, then? I'm not a tramp. I'm a soldier. 
Well, at least I was. I suppose I still am, technically. I wanted to be with somebody, somebody I loved very much, but who couldn't commit. Went to pieces for a while and left the army. Couldn't deal with it. But once you're out, you can't go back in. So I ended up drifting from place to place. <laughs> Moving target. Eventually ended up living rough. Were you in Afghanistan like Dan's dad? No, I was much too old for that. I was in Desert Storm, the Gulf War. So how old are you? <laughs> Not as old as I feel. Oh, look, apparently. So what's your favourite war film? What? Favourite war film? Well, I don't know. Where Eagles Dare? Something like that, I suppose. Who's your favourite band? Do you like the Kaiser Chiefs? Never heard of them. I used to like Johnny Cash. Is he still about? Who? Have a trade while you're in the army. Have something you can use when you come out. I'm never coming out. I'm in for life. No, no, no. It's a young man's game. But you need to have a plan. Brains will get you so far, but luck always runs out. It's who you are that persists and gets you to where you're going. I'm going straight in the army. It's all I've ever wanted to do. Oh. My. God. Philip! Oi! Who's Philip? Give that Last night, I dreamt of Philip again. I dreamt that we were together. He was as young and as beautiful as the first time I saw him. If I could spend one more day laughing with him and one more night holding him in my arms, I would gladly make it my last. The years have not dulled the pain. I think about him every day. His rejection is my penance. Oh, my God! What? Please give me that back. Was he your son? Did he die or something? No, you idiot. It was his boyfriend. Honestly, don't you get it? Philip is the one he left the army for. Ken is a big old bender. That's why he was so interested in you, Dan. He wasn't giving you fatherly career advice. He was perving you. You were being groomed. Oh, my God. Is this a pedo camp, Ken? Is that it? Is this camp pedo? We all know you are camp, Kenny. Are we your next victims? Are there dead bodies here, Ken? Are you going to abuse us? Are you going to violate us and then murder us? 
Is that right, Lanky? Are you a nonce? Is that why you've got us here? Hey, I never invited you to anything. As I recall, you lot, I try to get rid of you. Yeah, but to be honest, though, Ken, he didn't try very hard. We'd only been here a minute, and, well, he started cooking for us and plying us with alcohol. Why did you really leave the army, Ken? Just drop it, OK? It's like I said. It's none of your business, all right? Yeah. But leaving the army is not like quitting a job. You can't just walk out. You've absolutely no idea what you're talking about. I can't do, actually. Look. Some of the guys in my unit weren't too happy when they found out about me, all right? They thought regular beatings was a way of dealing with it. I mean, I expect my enemies to try and kill me, but but these are my friends, my colleagues. They're the ones supposed to have my back. I, I, I couldn't handle it. Oi, Jesus, Ken. Did you go AWOL? It was a long time ago. No one's looking for me now. Can you be sure about that? There's only one way to find out. You're a traitor. A dirty pervert and... and a traitor! Now listen, son. I know you don't appreciate how childish this attitude makes you look. You're a good kid underneath, I could tell. Don't touch me, you pedo. Don't patronise me. And never call me son. Oh my God! You degenerate! Just... go die. I thought you was all right, no? You remind me of my dad. You're just a dirty pervert. Traitor! Hey now, that's enough! Can I do? We? You killed him. Oh crap, do you think he's dead? Well, he wasn't looking too healthy. He just went. Him. This is really bad. We should tell the police. What for, you idiot? We need to get away from here as far and as fast as we can. Well, what happens when someone finds him? You heard what he said. He's been there for months and no one's found him. By the time someone finds him, we'll be long gone. So, what do we do? I say we go to the police. You say that one more time and go hit you in the head with a rock. Nobody is going to the police. But why don't we bury him? Why? Did you bring your shovel? Well, he must have something we could use. He was like an army commando. Like Bear Grylls or something. He must have something we could use. We can't bury him. Well, why not? That would make it look a lot worse. It looked too premeditated. We could tidy up a bit, though. Make it harder for someone to find him. But not make it look deliberate. Well, we have to do something. Oh, for God's sake. Shit. Oh, shit. At least he ain't dead. Not yet, at least. I don't reckon he had long. I hope he is dead. Why? Well, what if he isn't? You watch too many films. He has a point, though. He ain't gonna be happy. I think we should leave. That's the worst thing we can do. Well, what if he's out there watching us? All he has to do is, well... BAM! You saw what he did to that rabbit. You knob. Uh. 
We thought you were dead. Not quite. Not yet, anyway. You're a tough old bugger. I'm really sorry. You gonna tell the cops on us? I was captured in Iraq, you know. We was marching along the Basra Road. We got ambushed. I got shot in the leg and was captured. They blindfolded me and took me to this house with this young Iraqi fella. He was the only one who spoke English. He was left to interrogate me. I thought his orders were torture me for a bit and then and then kill me. But I could tell he was scared. So I did what I was trained to do and got him talking. He took my blindfold off and started trying to ask me questions about my mission. But he was no professional soldier. He was completely clueless. Oh, I could see hate in his eyes, but fear too. He told me that his wife and baby daughter were killed by a missile and wanted to know why we'd invaded his country. He started talking about Saddam and about how most Iraqis hated him too because he was corrupt and brutal. If he'd been a proper soldier, I could have got past it and ignored it. But I could see now that he was a family man. He was no different to me or my brother or my father. His anger and hate came out of fear. He'd been brainwashed into thinking that we were his enemy. Now he'd taken my blindfold off and looked me in the face, he could see that, that, that we were the same. Sometimes, when looking at your enemy in the face, you're actually looking in the mirror. Sometimes, you need to step outside your own perspective to see that we're all the same. Not everyone's your enemy. It's fear that makes us hate one another. Yeah, anyway, then he just untied me and let me go. But before I left, he made me promise that I'd understand that we were the same, that one day I'd pay it forward out of an act of kindness to someone who, by rights, should be my enemy. Of course, in that situation, I'd, I'd have promised anything to get away. I was soon picked up and invalided home. It was only really a scratch on my calf. So I was back to active service in no time, but I never fought again. I knew, I knew that my career as a soldier was over. I never told anyone what happened, not even Philip. I just said that they'd left me unguarded and I got away. It took a few months for what he'd said to me to properly sink in. But I never had a chance to keep that promise I made to him. Well, not until now. Come on, Ken. We need to get you to the hospital. You're bleeding all over the place. No, I'm not going to no hospital. Don't you see? This is my ending. Look at the last page of my diary. It's in the tent.
September 14th. I finally caught the buck rabbit I've been stalking for weeks. He was a big bugger who could have lasted me for days. Three young kids from the children's zone found my camp. Three young kids from the children's zone found my camp and gave me some grief. I could see they were good kids underneath. So I shared my rabbit with them. We swapped war stories and I sent them home with full bellies. Was tired later. I slipped and hit my head quite badly on a rock. It is quite nasty. There's a bit of a cut and I could probably do with a stitch. I've been feeling dizzy. I think I'm in a bad way. Listen, do me one last favour, would you? Don't leave me here. Take me with you. 